In today's YouTube video, I am going to be applying a full face of luxurious, glamorous, expensive makeup products. Let's go. Hello sisters, James Charles here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, it's giving, why am I sounding Australian? Yeah, I was Australian. How do you do a British accent? I need to take the jet to London. Lewis, call Robert. Robert. The pilot. <laughs> Okay, enough of that. James Charles here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. No matter how I sit here and try to pretend, I am simply not a luxurious, bougie person. However, in today's YouTube video, we are going to change that for about two and a half hours while we're filming because we're gonna be trying out a full face of luxury designer expensive makeup products to come up with a makeup look that for once will be breaking the bank. In today's video, we are trying out a $150 foundation. We have a $200 moisturizer. This entire makeup routine cost me almost $1,000. A thousand dollars. I've been able to create some really beautiful makeup looks that have cost way less money than this, but I'm going to this open-minded, who knows? Maybe I'll end up finding a new favorite product that is actually worth the money. Without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Butler. Get the bell. Yeah, get me the bell. Give me that. Don't you ring at me. Go back to my water. I don't even know your name. You over there. Cheshire. Ch oh. Cheshire. <laughs> Cheshire. Cheshire. Fetch me my <laughs> First and foremost, you guys, before I put any of these products on my face today, like I said, this entire makeup routine cost me almost $1,000. So if you're excited for today's video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up down below. I would love to make my money back. <laughs> All right, you guys, for product number one, we are starting off with a bang. You guys know we always have to prime the face, get the skin ready to go. And we are going to start off with a La Mer moisturizer. This cost me $100. $100 and I'm going to be so real with you guys, okay? Like I said, I definitely believe, I'm a, I'm a big stan of finding dupes, finding affordable makeup products. <gasps> it's gonna be minuscule. I just, oh my God, I, oh, they literally put padding inside of the small box to fit an even smaller product inside. <sighs> this, this was $100? The audacity. The gumption? This tiny little container. Oh my god, it's like it's a product Hey! One hundred dollars for this tiny little container. I'm going to be very real and really honest with you guys right now, okay? I personally am somebody who would much rather invest into good skincare than good makeup. Obviously, you know, being an artist, I am trained to know how to make not the best products look good, but I do believe in investing in skincare. Of course, there's much cheaper great alternatives rather than spending a hundred dollars on a moisturizer, but for me personally, I have always wanted to try La Mer products or even that brand Augustina's Bader. That's like a billion dollars for a little thing, but I have never pulled the plug because I just, I don't wanna spend my money on it. This video today was a great excuse to have to buy these products. So it feels very nice on the skin. It smells really delightful, um, but it's certainly not giving me any sort of crazy sensation if I'm gonna be so real, okay? It is nice and I will be using this entire jar, let me tell you, but already off the bat, am I thinking like, oh my God, this is groundbreaking worth $100? No. Maybe it'll make my makeup look the best it's ever looked. We're gonna get there. So now for foundation. For today, we picked up the La Mer, the Soft Fluid Foundation, and this cost me $140. Now I will let you guys know that originally for this video, we did want to use the La Prairie Foundation. Um, however, they were sold out literally everywhere because apparently they're having supply chain issues after it went viral on TikTok. That foundation cost $280, whereas this one's 140, so obviously quite a steal over here. <laughs> a lot of the shades in this foundation were sold out as well. So we are hopefully going to be able to make this work. The packaging does look gorgeous. I mean, it's a nice, like very heavy glass component. To me, that does not justify $140. I'll be totally honest, but at least if it is a high price tag, you know, you can see that there's certain elements of it that are luxurious, right? We're gonna go ahead and squeeze this out into the back of my hand. Oh my God, it's really, it, look at how like wet it is. Oh, I will say though, this color match looks like it might actually be phenomenal. Look at, oh my God, it's like blending into my hand. Well, thank God, because the one thing that I really noticed while shopping for these products today was that the shade range was absolute fucking garbage on all of them. While it's not surprising, it is definitely disappointing to see because obviously people of all skin tones want to be able to shop both affordable and luxury products. Just a little bit of insight from a business perspective as well. There's 
never an excuse for a bad shade range. Let me make that abundantly clear right now. But when you're developing a makeup brand, the more colors that you add, the more expensive it actually gets to produce. So that's why a lot of times, a lot of smaller indie brands are not able to come out with like a 40 color foundation line because it just costs them too much money, right? But for brands like La Mer or even La Prairie that are charging 140 or $280 for one, one fucking product, you cannot tell me that they do not have enough money in their bank account to be able to fund an actually inclusive shade range. Side eye. It's simply not possible. Foundations are one of the hardest things to develop and it's one of the products that takes the longest time. So even though my makeup brand hasn't even launched yet, I will let you guys know I'm already working on foundation formulas to launch in a couple of years from now. But to be clear, <laughs> to be clear, I have no investors, no partners. Like I said, the brand hasn't launched, so it's made zero dollars. But even I'm working on a big shade range because hello, it has to be. So the fact that these luxury brands still don't care is like actually, it's really insane and really, really sad. First impression so far is that I am kind of like feeling mixed throughout this foundation right now. It's not bad, but it's also not great. For $140, I literally expect like fucking Makeup by Mario to jump out of this bottle and then apply it onto my face. But it does look okay. Like it's not like it looks bad. Now that we have the foundation all on, I do wanna go in and add some color back to the skin. So I'm going to grab this Tan Soleil, uh-huh. Soleil Tan, oh, it's Soleil Tan de Chanel. Okay, this is their medium bronzer and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply this to the face. I have tried this before, full transparency. This is not a first impression and I do like this, but this product costs $50. It is pretty big and the packaging is pretty nice. So out of all the products that we're gonna try today, I will say that this is probably going to be one of the least offensive in terms of how much you actually get for your money, the performance and the packaging combined. I think there's a lot of other great cream bronzers out there for a lot less money. The face is looking okay so far, but it's certainly not looking like we spend $290 worth of a base routine. Um, maybe that'll change when we go in with our next product, which is the YSL Touche de Clot Concealer. We got the shade 2.5 Peach. I'm hoping that this is a good color match for me. Let's go ahead and try it out. This color looking, oh fuck. It's bright, or it's literally orange on my skin. Oh my God. Not the brand's fault. This is my fault for picking a bad shade. So this is on me. I, I will own that 100%. Let me blend this out and see what the formula is actually giving me because that's what we're really here for. And then I'm gonna have to lighten it up with another concealer. In terms of the actual coverage and formula, that is not bad. It blends it out nicely. It did do, I wouldn't say it's full coverage by any means. I would say it's more light to medium coverage, but it does blend nicely on the skin. Damn, that sucks. I, I, I messed up big time on that one. Now that the base is all blended together, it is time to set it in place. And for today's video, we are going to use one of the most viral products on social media recently, the Givenchy Prisme Libre Powder. And I'm gonna be so real with you guys, I don't like this. I don't, I do not like it one bit. I've tried this before for an old YouTube video or a TikTok or something, and I hated it. For $59, when the Maybelline Fit Me Powder for $8 is sitting right there, I don't think so. Uh-uh. We're gonna dip right in in our lovely little powder puff. It's flying in the air. Hello? Cheshire, <coughs> 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 bring me my stand, please. <gasps> Thank you. I stand behind what I said with this powder. This powder is not good. It's not giving. I'm not liking this so far. Our next product that we're going to be using is a product that has gone so viral. I genuinely cannot believe that I have never actually tried this out for myself. And that is the Dior Baby Pink Blush. You guys, I'm really excited to be trying this today. I'm gonna to be so real. You guys know that I love blush. This is, oh, the, the camera does not do it justice. Here's the actual color right there. It's a beautiful, like vibrant baby pink. I am so excited to be trying this out today. The color is definitely pretty. I'm really, really liking the finish of this formula as well. It's not a full matte like a lot of blushes are. It does have a little bit of, I wouldn't say a glow, because it's certainly not like a highlighter, but a little bit of a natural radiance, if you will. Yeah, this is really pretty. Next up, trucking right along, sticking with the Dior family, we're gonna grab the Dior Show Brow Styler. This is one of the only luxury brow products that I could find, so this is really our only option. And this one only costs $31, which is obviously a little bit more expensive than the typical brow pencil. I think Anastasia's are like 21. Not offensive. Wait, this brow pencil is actually kind of good, if I'm being honest. That color looks really good on me. It's not too dark, it's not too warm, cool. It's like the perfect neutral medium brown. All right. Oh, we're country now. <laughs> we are ready to move on to my favorite part of the makeup routine, as always, an eyeshadow look. Now for today, we're gonna be using some Natasha Denona 
eyeshadow palettes. Now these babies cost more than $100 each. I actually did not buy these palettes today. I wanna give a lovely shout out to my friend, Laura Lee. She let me borrow these for the day to film with, which is amazing. When these palettes first became a massive thing in the beauty community, they shook the nation because I vividly remember the price tags of these palettes being $128. But when we looked online today, these are retailing for $69. So I don't know if they were on sale or if Miss Natasha Denona dropped the prices a little bit because nobody was actually buying them for $128. Something in my gut is telling me that this is a Mandela effect. I remember these being priced well over $100. Let me know in the comments down below, but we're gonna go ahead and create a beautiful look with these colors today and see if these $100 eyeshadow formulas are actually worth the price. Let's go in first with a big fluffy brush and I'm gonna start by dipping into this nice, like cool tone brown transition shade right up in here. And next I'm gonna grab a little bit of this like warmer tone ready brown from the other palette. Oh my God, you guys, actually one thing that I really wanted to talk about while we're filming this video today and on the topic of luxurious makeup and spending money. I was just in Miami for the weekend to go to my friend Lele Ponza's wedding. It was a beautiful, lovely time. Congratulations to her and Guayna. I posted on my story when I was on the way there on a plane. And I was really, really shocked by the amount of people that were in my DM was being like, why aren't you flying private? Oh my God, queen of flying commercial. You're not flying private. Like you can't afford that. I don't, I don't think people actually understand how expensive it is. First of all, private planes, if you like want to buy a private plane, like Kylie Air, Skyly, whatever the name of the jet is, KKW Air, those jets cost like $150 million. My James Charles Morphe palette made me a lot of money, okay? <laughs> but can I afford a private jet? Absolutely not. Uh, not even close. Could I afford a private flight? Which, if case you guys don't know, can cost anywhere between like 20 and 50 grand. Sure, I could afford to pay for that, but would it be a smart financial investment? No, absolutely not. So could I afford that on like a, a one or two time occasion? Yeah, I could. But would it be a smart financial investment? No. There's even, oh my God, I don't know if people will actually be interested to hear this, but there's even like a, um, a whole separate airport at LAX called the private suite. And I have done it, whoa! Whoa, that's pretty. Oh my God, okay, slay. Basically the private suite is like a LAX for rich people. So you book your flight through like the regular airline and the flight will take off from LAX, but you don't pull up to LAX. You pull up to a whole separate like little mini building, okay? It's nearby and they greet you, they take your bags, they check you in. They have like a gorgeous like full meal ready for you to go. There's a bar where you can get drinks at. When it's time for your flight to actually take off, they put you in a limousine. <laughs> Then literally the limousine drives you from this building that's like a couple of miles away directly onto the airport tarmac. And then they pull up next to your plane, you get out of the car and then you go right up the plane steps and you're the first one on the plane. So fun, it's giving luxury. And once again, very expensive. I think it was like $5,000. My manager ended up paying for it for me when I was traveling internationally one time just cause he wanted me to experience it. Of course I was grateful for that and it was a great experience, let me be clear. But once again, could I afford that? Yes. Would it be a smart financial investment? No, absolutely not. And would I do it over and over again? No. Maybe. This eyeshadow look is coming out really, really beautiful. I mean, with a $128 price tag, I would certainly hope so, but I will give credit where credit is due. Natasha is known for having really great formulas, and I would definitely say that this is living up to the expectations. If you want to splurge, I don't think that you'll be disappointed by any means. Let me go ahead and finish up the other eye off camera quickly, and then I'll be right back to finish off the rest of this makeup look. We're back, and both eyes are now complete, and I'm gonna be real with you guys. I keep saying I'm gonna be real with you guys. Shut up, James. I used to use this eyeliner for several years in a makeup collection. This Tom Ford eyeliner retails for $62 for an eyeliner pen. Now, obviously, that is that is awful. There are so many great eyeliners that you can get from Sephora for 20 bucks or even the drugstore for, you know, 10 or 12. However, I'll be honest and say that this one is really, really good. So it's dual ended. You get a tiny little detail brush on this end and then you get a longer brush for winged liner at this end. Although the price is crazy, I wasn't too upset about spending my money on this today because it's a good liner. I feel like I remember it being like more pigmented. It's going easily, it's not skipping at all either, which is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to liner, but it's not like super opaque. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give my lashes a simple little curl. And then for mascaras today, I picked up the Lancome Definitions High Definition Mascara. $33 for this mascara, definitely overpriced, especially when you can get some great drugstore mascaras for a couple of bucks. Ooh, the packaging is kind of chic. I do really like the wand of this, I will say. Personally, I love a tiny little mascara wand so I can do detail work and make sure that I get the lashes. This is doing literally, all this is doing to my lashes is making them bluish gray. They're not looking defined, they're not looking lifted, they're not looking curled, they're not looking voluminized. 
I'm really not impressed. Next, we're gonna go in and add a little bit of glow. The Dior Forever Couture Illuminizer in the shade 02. $50? For one highlighter? This is what it's giving inside. It's like a beautiful like pinky reflective color. Oh, wow, okay. That's very pretty. Personally, I, you guys know, I don't really wear highlighter that much anymore. I feel like that time in my makeup career is over with. It's beautiful, it's radiant. It's definitely adding, you know, a glow, but it's not like crazy blinding glittery textury. This is really, it is very beautiful. For $50, I don't know. There's some great ones on the market for a lot less money, but this isn't bad. And last but not least, the only step missing in this makeup routine is obviously our lipstick. Now, there are several different luxury lipsticks out there. I figured to play it safe and go for one of the most popular luxury lipsticks right now is the Dior Lip Oil. These have been sold out literally everywhere, you guys. We had to go to three different Sephora's just to fucking find a color. This one cost me $40, which for a lip oil, I do feel like is very, very steep. If we're being honest, this probably cost them literally like three dollars to actually produce and manufacture so the profit margin that they're making on this is absolutely insane i obviously have nothing else on my lips i'm just putting this on over top mm, okay it tastes like peppermint the formula feels nice it's a good consistency it's definitely like thicker than a typical lip oil but it's not sticky which i really like it is supposed to have like a pink tint to it as you guys can see in the component i will say tinting my lips it did not. They look exactly the same as they did before. They just look glossier, but I am really not complaining. I personally don't want my lips to be super bright pink anyway. I think that it's good. For $40, I don't know, but I can see why this is very popular and very hyped the way that it is right now across social media. And on that note, bring me my outro, please, Cheshire. I don't have it, Ew, he's not like Dobby the house elf. Of course, I cannot wait to read your guys' thoughts and feedback in the comments down below on if you think this face is worth $1,000, but I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys know from my perspective, looking in the mirror, absolutely fucking not. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below. Your love and support really helps me and the channel out quite a lot. And if you have not already, of course, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button as well as the bell icon next to it so you guys never miss an upload from me. If you want to follow me on my other social media platforms, my Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter are all just James Charles, and my makeup TikTok is J Charles Makeup. Thank you so much for watching today's video. It has truly been a pleasure to spend my time with you. Thank you for watching, thank you for your love, and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.